It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So a couple of weeks back, I reviewed a ultrasonic cleaner and I didn't have what I thought were fantastic results from it, but thanks to the comments that were actually coming back to the video that people left in that, I discovered that I probably wasn't giving the ultrasonic cleaner a fair and reasonable representation of its possibilities. Um, I kind of misunderstood how ultrasonic cleaning worked and the comments gave me the information that essentially I'm actually relying less on the vibrations to shake dirt and particulate off things and it's really more about the ultrasonic energy causing cavitation in the liquid, in the cleaning liquid, uh, which causes bubbles to form which explosively collapse, which the shock waves cause dirt and particulates to come off. Um, so with that in mind, I was given some help and some suggestions on improving the actual performance of the ultrasonic cleaner. And it really comes down to the fact that I was using just straight up water and I wasn't using a ultrasonic cleaning solution. And I did my research into ultrasonic cleaning solutions very lightly and a lot of them are based upon surfactants which reduce the surface tension and bonding strength of the water molecules of the liquid. So under ultrasonic energy, what essentially happens is that they cavitate faster or better and therefore you get more of those shock waves within the solution. So let's just switch down to the desktop and have a look at what I'm going to try and do today. So here's the unit. It's already filled with water. It's just straight up water. What I've got here is I've got a little thing which is a mixture of uh, dishwashing detergent, which is the clear stuff. I've got some laundry detergent, which is the blue stuff. And I've got some bicarb soda, which is the white stuff. And I've got a spoon that I'm going to be able to mix that in with. I was also told that a good way of determining if your ultrasonic cleaner is actually doing the job right uh, and your solution is being effective is to use aluminium foil, right? And so that's just what I've got here. Aluminium foil is very thin uh, as far as mat materials go and it's very fragile as far as materials go. So theoretically, if your ultrasonic cleaner is doing a good job, it should punch holes into aluminium foil. So we're going to give that a go as well. Now what I've done is I've got four pieces of foil here and I've just snipped them with some lines so we know what they are. And it's one, two, three and four cuts into the actual foil. So there's number four and you can see there's four cuts. Uh, if the camera will focus, yeah, I've got four cuts in there. So what I'm going to do is one and two is going to be water but it's going to be the 35 watt and 50 watt at the maximum run time to give it really a, a good chance of demonstrating if it'll do it. And I believe the maximum run time was seven minutes. So I'm going to do the time lapse for all of this and you'll see it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same again, but after I've mixed in the actual detergent, 35 and 50 with the three cut and the four cut pieces of foil so we can see if there's any noticeable differences. Look, the pieces aren't exactly the same size, but it'll give us an idea, right? What I've also got here on the side is the those vintage blacks again, those dirty, scratchy vintage blacks. And at the same time, I'm going to put in one switch at the 50 watts without, which we did previously at three minutes. Uh, so let's see if it'll do any better at seven minutes, just straight up water. And then another switch, which will be with the actual detergent and the surfactants in it to see if it makes a significant difference. So let's just have a look at the switches. Uh, I'll pick out two. Hopefully they'll be sort of even in terms of how dirty they are. And that way we got some kind of idea and comparison of how good or bad the cleaning regime is. Now, I would expect that with the detergent, the detergent will actually help scrub stuff off. And that's kind of a secondary effect more than anything else. So 
Okay. There's one of them. And you can see it's got quite a lot of stuff that's caked on. Lots of sort of uh, grime and rust looking type of material there. And then here's another one. Similarly so, it's got a lot of deposits, you know, around the stem and everything else. So, these I think are, are fairly comparable and we'll give them a run and see how they turn out. Um, of course, you know, if you want to know a little bit more about the actual unit, you can see the previous video where I've gone and shown that off. So, let's get started. There is the single cut and that's going to go in to the solution. We're just going to let that plonk in uh, and I'll set it up ready to go and I'll see you on the other side of this time lapse. Okay, so we are back. Uh, we are back. Just adjusted my microphone there because I think it might be a bit on the softer side these days. Uh, I have the four pieces of foil on the table below, as you may have seen if you didn't skip through that time lapse. And then I've got the switch from the 35 watt, um, sorry the 50 watt without detergent and the 50 watt with the detergent and we'll have a look at them a little bit closer what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a, a bit of a black background just here so it's a little bit easier to see and I'm going to lift these up so we can uh, have that sort of comparison still a little bit damp on the bottom but some very interesting results I, I must say okay now the first one so this is 35 watts uh, without solution with just straight up water and we can see that it's definitely punched some pretty big holes through that foil. There's some sort of large holes around and there's a little bit of light sort of stippling in the actual foil itself. Now if I hold it up to the light, the light doesn't actually pass through any of these small holes but you can see it's definitely eaten away in some of these very big patches. Then we've got 50 watts at 7 minutes, also without solution, and it's quite a lot more stippling. The, it's all over. I wouldn't say it's very even. You're still getting some of that eating away uh, on the actual foil, getting some big holes and gaps, but that speckled appearance that you're seeing, and the camera's having a fit because it's trying to focus on the reflections, if I actually hold that up, some of them are starting to show a little bit of light. And that's because they're starting to form the bigger holes which these larger, more visible holes would have expanded out from. So there is definitely a noticeable difference in regards to 35 watt to 50 watts at 7 minutes. Um, we'll leave the switches until the end, I guess is probably the easiest way of doing it. So now, this is the top one where the detergent went in and it was 7 minutes, 35 watts. We got some holes kind of similar-ish to the without detergent. I don't feel like the stippling was necessarily as noticeable. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a lot compared to the actual plain water. It does have a little bit. I can see some texture there. Um, but if I'm holding it up to the light, will I see any difference? And the answer is no. So the amount of detergent I put in didn't really seem to do terribly much. I guess the only thing I would say is the edges seem to be a bit more uh, organically unraveled compared to this because there's still a lot of really straight clean edges along all sides, whereas this has really been eaten away a bit more by comparison. And then 
I guess the most ideal condition is the 50 watts with the detergent, which is this piece. We've got some sort of larger holes, but the biggest contrast here is that it does have the stippling all over. It's really even. It's super even. Like, you know, it's almost like I put this on the ground, on some gravel or something like that, um, on bitumen, and just ran my hand over it because it's got that rippling, bumpy texture to it. Now, if I hold it up, I can actually see some very small pinpricks in that stippling as well. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're starting to show through. And I feel like, while it doesn't look like it's a very big difference, it's more even in how the actual bubbles are tearing away at the foil. And if I look at the outside edges, it's eaten away at it a lot. Like, the smooth cut edges, there's only a little bit up here, a little bit over there, a couple of bits over here, but a lot of it's really etched away. And that kind of correlates with what I'm saying, or at least the way that I feel about it, that there is a lot more even distribution of the cavitation that's happening on the foil. So that's really cool. That's really interesting. So I think that is demonstrating the solution, very simple solution. I just added detergent and uh, dishwashing liquid, laundry liquid, sorry, dishwashing liquid and a little bit of bicarb soda. Now, so I'm uh, just going to... So that one, which is going to be on that side, is without cleaning, and that is with cleaning solution. And I think it's, uh, it's already really noticeable, the difference that you can see there, just in the color. Like, there's a lot more black that's actually visible there. So let's just try and get a bit more close-up and camera focus on that. Okay. So there's still a lot of that dark Apache colors. You know, I don't think it's done a great clean. I could see just by the color of the actual solution itself, a lot wasn't peeling off. I'd say a little bit, very minor clean, you know, around the top, around the stem here, some of that encrusted stuff has come off a bit, but it's not done a significant difference. So this one is with the actual detergent, and I think actually it's taken more off. Like, the bottom of that is really clean. Um, I know that the top, the top had quite, quite a lot of encrusted material, and you can see it's almost all gone. I was actually really surprised to see how much of it was just streaming away from the switch. Like, if you look at the time-lapse when I put it in, I don't know how quick it'll look like in time-lapse, but the water got dirty real quick. And, of course, that could be a mixture of the fact that there is actually detergent in it, but it could also be what I'm talking about with this piece, is that that cavitation is really even. It's hitting all of the surfaces around the switch a lot more compared to just a couple of spots here and there. Now, this switch in itself isn't 100% clean, but it is a darn sight better compared to where it was. You know, there, look, there's still deposits underneath that actual tab there, um, but definitely a very noticeable, marked improvement on what it looks like. If I ran this for another seven minutes, if I took it apart, I feel like I would definitely be able to get a much better clean. Now, of course, there's all sorts of foil bits all over it because that's from the foil that's been punched out of these four pieces here. So naturally I would drain that off and then put in some more cleaning solution. But that was really good. That was really, really effective. So thank you very much to, uh, I think it was Barry that was in the comments giving me that information about having a correct cleaning solution that would make all the difference and it really has to how effective ultrasonic cleaning can be. And you can just see how brown that water is compared to what it was before I put it in with that detergent. Massive difference. Massive, massive difference. So, you know, 
Hopefully this unit can forgive me for saying that it wasn't very effective when I did that first review. And I think now that I have a better understanding of it, it's certainly going to have more value to it. It is actually quite warm now because it's been running 24 minutes. They don't recommend you run it for longer than an hour without giving it a cool down rest period. So that's about half of how long you could actually run it for. Um, you know, you could probably fill it to a third with switches and that water would probably get quite dirty. Run it twice. Uh, well, you could run it, what, eight cycles in an hour? And then give it a rest, swish out the solution. I think you'd go a really, really long way in seeing how effective that would be to cleaning off some vintage switches. So there you go. Now, if you do want to see a bit more detail about the Baku BK3550, there is the video before um, in my, my videos that you should be able to find, but I'll also have the link for that again in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself, especially if there's a sale on or a coupon or something like that and you might be able to pick this up cheap. Could be a good little cleaner for cleaning off vintage switches or just any other random things around the house. Make sure you just use a bit of surfactant to help with the water cavitation that is actually doing the cleaning, not the vibrations, which, you know, I got wrong. Rightio, that's it. Done for the video. Thank you very much for watching it um, or skipping through it, however you like. If you want to see more, stuff like this or if you've got suggestions on what you'd like me to check out and review or do for keyboard science and things like that please leave it in the comments below really love and appreciate it if you hit that like button that share button and of course that subscribe button and that's it as usual until next time happy clacking